Okay, welcome to this week's BUSEC seminar. Uh, this week we have Jayu. Jayu uh, is a PhD student in BUSEC. He works with Adam. Uh, he started his PhD at Penn State uh, and then moved to BU after one year. He works on quantum cryptography and complexity. Uh, so he'll be telling us about a single author paper uh, he has written over the last uh, year or so, a couple years. So thank you. Uh, I'm very really happy to share my recent result on 16 blind quantum computation using a random oracle. I'm Jia Yu Zhang from Boston University. So what is blind quantum computation? In this problem, Alice has a quantum circuit C, and he wants to evaluate it and get C0. But he doesn't have the ability to apply C itself. So it makes use of a remote quantum server. But on the other hand, it doesn't trust the server and want to keep this secret. So it wants to design some protocols and interact with the server and get the result in the end. So this is a very fundamental problem in quantum cryptography. The problem itself is very important because, uh, because in the near future, with our probability, quantum computers can only be used as a cloud service. So if we want to make use of this power, and simultaneously, want to keep our data or circuit secure, such a protocol is needed. What's more, this problem has often led to new techniques that can be later applied to related problems, like the quantum computer verification, which is, uh, which is considered to be a fundamental problem in quantum cryptography and quantum computing. So before we move to our our protocols, let's first give a quick review of quantum computation and cryptography. So this table uh, contains some analog between classical computation and quantum computation. In classical computation, each bit has two states, zero and one. And correspondingly, in quantum computation, uh, the concept is called qubit. And each qubit has infinite possible states, which is which, which is described to be the linear combination of state zero and state one. So here alpha and beta are all complex, complex numbers. And furthermore, in classical world, a bit string in zero, one to the n corresponds to a vector in dimension two to the n, which is a, which is a vector in a very large space. And to describe it, you need to write to the n numbers. And probability distributions correspond to density operators. And different gates like and or and not gate correspond to the, some unitary transformations on complex spaces. And some simple gates include, the, include for example, polygates, Clifford gate, Hammer gate, Toffee gate. And so there's also some new phenomena in quantum world, like the entanglement, which has no analog in classical world. And quantum computation also makes cryptography uh, much, more much very different from classical world. For example, in quantum world, quantization is known to be efficient by Schwarz algorithm. And in classical world, by quantization is assumed to be hard, which is a foundation of, for example, RSA crypto systems. And using quantum computation, we can also do anti secure key exchange, which is possible in classical world. So, in quantum world, some basic assumptions are broken, and the adversaries can be more powerful. For example, they can attack crypto primitives by using superposition queries or using entanglement or using quantum state information. And this, and this forced us to develop some new techniques and new protocol, new protocols for quantum, quantum cryptography. And this can also lead to new possibilities and new problems, which give us a whole new story. So let's go back to our problems. So black quantum computation problem. There are three minimum requirements for this problem. Credit security and efficiency. Quantity means with the service honest, the client should get the correct result. For security, 
literally with that uh, the third had hit C as an input, or it uses the auxiliary string as an input. And for efficiency, all the only computer should be with a fixed polynomial of the security parameter. Uh, uh, you, you, sorry, from some yeah. yeah, go ahead, Sarah. We're having some sound yeah. issues. Yeah, uh, I think I missed everything you said starting when you were describing security. Uh, just you, you've been cutting out a little bit. So could I stay in this page? Do I need to go back, go to the yeah, previous could, could, page? No, th this page is fine. I think I, uh, at least I only started missing sound oh. when, uh, when you were talking about security for, so the, the middle bullet oh, okay. point, I guess. Okay, okay. So for security, we use indistinguishability-based security, which says the adversary could not distinguish whether the client is using the real circuit C as input or using the zero string as input. And for efficiency, we we'll assume the honest computation are all upper bounded by a fixed polynomial of the security parameter and the circuit size. And these are just minimal requirements. And there are still many, there are still many different settings for these problems, which can lead to different results. In this work, we we'll give a new universal blind quantum computation protocol where the client side quantum computation is succinct which means it's upper bounded by, by a fixed polynomial of the security parameter. And it's secure in the quantum random oracle model. So let's give a review of existing works for this problem. And we will focus on the universal protocols using only a single quantum server. Existing work for this problem can be classified into two classes. One class is IT secure protocols. And the representative for this protocol is the UBQC protocol by Barbara Bisman Kajaki more than 10 years ago. In this, in this protocol, there are two phases. In the first phase, the client will send many quantum gadgets to the server. And after that, the client and server only need to use some classic computation and, and interactions. What, uh, Jayu? Hi. What? Can you define UBQC? Uh, UBQC means universal blank quantum computation, which means... Oh, oh, okay, cool, cool. I thought it, thought it was a complexity class. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Okay. So, so in the problem based mechanical product, the client sends some quantum gadgets and the client do some classic interaction with the server. But one problem is in this protocol, the size of quantum gadgets uh, that the client need to prepare is linear to the size of the circuit. And this seems to be inherent for IC secure protocols. So, so, so Jesus, I want to make sure I understand uh, the model. So there is a client who is sending uh, uh, some quantum information, some quantum circuits, whatever, quantum uh, uh, state to, uh, to a server. Uh, and then uh, from then yeah. on, the client, or maybe yeah. the setup state, was and, a product. Yeah. and then the client is classical from then on, right? And, and, those, yeah. uh, and those quantum gadgets are used, reused for many evaluations. Is that the case or one-time evaluation? Uh, each gadget is used for each gate and is consumed. Oh, so it's a one-time computation, right? I see. Right, right, right. I see. So, so the point is that uh, uh, the delay that, you know, I, I prepared the circuit and I sent it over. And before I know the input, later I know the input. At this point, I don't have the circuit anymore. Right, right, right. right. And the point is that even they, I don't trust the server to do what it's, to, it's supposed to do, right? Uh, is, that, is that the point that I don't trust the server to run the gadget as 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 uh, I asked him to? Uh, that's more similar to 
the verification problem, but here we only consider the blindness, which means the server could not distinguish whether, whether the client is running C or running zero to the C, which means the server does not know C. I see. So, so you trust the server to do, to, the server is semi honest, right? That's what it's told. You just want yeah. to hide information. Yeah, yeah. I see. And, and the information you want to hide is both the circuit and the input, or just the input? And the circuit is, is, is fixed. Uh, in, I think in other existing works, these two are equivalent. I, I can't uh, say. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Thanks. And the okay. circuit is this, uh, sorry again. So and the circuit is classical or quantum? The circuit the, the circuit itself is, it's, is quantum. It's, it's, a, it's a classical circuit. It has a description. Oh sorry, sorry. It's quantum circuit has a description. The, oh, the circuit so, is quantum circuit. Yeah, go ahead. So could you say again? I think I heard quantum circuit, but classical description or something like that. I heard quantum circuit something. Yeah, it's a quantum circuit, but it's described classically. Great. It's not a quantum circuit with quantum auxiliary input. No. I see. So it's a, right, and, and the input to the quantum circuit that is later being done, I guess it would be a classical input, right? Later on. To uh, uh, a classical uh, uh, input to the quantum circuit, I guess. Uh, I think it could, it could support classical inputs and other no existing works can support, classic, can support quantum or classical inputs. So these two problems are basically the same. I see, but I, think uh, so maybe I thought that in the picture, you know, the, the, the client Alice was, uh, was classical, she was not quantum. Or maybe I was wrong. So, so yeah, the, the, uh, the, Alice is classical after, in this protocol, Alice is classical after it stands out the quantum gadgets. I yeah. see. So, so is there a notion of an input or, or the, the, the input is already in the gadgets? Uh, so the input is, uh, here we can assume the input is zero for simplicity. I see. No, so maybe I don't understand. So in what sense, so what is Alice supposed to do later? So there's the initial state where you send the gadget to the, to the server. And uh, uh, what other information does the server need later on? Uh, the client will do some computation based on the circuit and based on the randomness in the quantum gadget. I see. So, so there, there is... Classical. So this is classical. So the, 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 the second stage of information sent from the client to, there is a first stage of information sent from the client to the server, which is a quantum, that's the gadget. And there is a second stage of information sent yeah. from the client to the server. And that second stage is classical. Yeah. I right. see. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So the second quantum gadget is this protocol is linear to the side of the circuit. And this seems to be inherent for all the no IT square protocols. And another class of protocols are protocols based on trapped assumptions or public encryption. Our early representative is a protocol by Dulac, Trump, and Spielman. And recently, Mahati gave a protocol based on the anyway's error assumptions. And this protocol, it, only needs classical kind when the output are classical. And here we focus on the assumptions and ask the following question. What if we only have symmetric crypto graphic primitives? And later we will model symmetric primitives as a random oracle. And we also have a specific goal, which is to make the class of quantum computation to be independent of the circuit size C. And this will make our protocol better than the anti-scale protocols in this part. So in summary, we can get the following table. 
which summarize different trade-offs between hindsight quantum computation and assumptions. And we can see the BFK protocol is on the bottom left corner, and the Mahadev protocol is on the upper right, top right corner. And our protocol shows a new trade-off between the hindsight quantum computation and assumption in this problem. And we can also see the, uh, the a protocol which is at its cure and which only uses which only uses a classical kind is conjectured to be impossible by this paper. And these two cells are still unknown. We don't have any result for that. So, so you say it's conjectured to be impossible, but it's not, it's also unknown, right? It's not proved. Right, right, right. Okay. It only, it only provides some complex theoretical evidences. I so see. it's not a problem. I see. And the quantum random Markov model is an ideal model for symmetric primitives. So in more detail, our protocol works as follows. So, can, can you put up the, sorry, can you put the table again? I'm sorry, it went away too fast. Yeah. Uh, so, so you're doing succinct in uh, 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 it's secure and, uh, okay, and, uh, So, so the, the, the board left, the, uh, okay. Um, okay, thanks, okay. okay. In the details, our protocol is as follows. First, it's quite efficient, and uh, also two phases. The current work first sends some quantum gadget to the server. And these quantum gadgets can be prepared using Polycarpal quantum gates, your poly is a fixed polynomial. So it's succinct. Then both parties do classical interactions, and the client can be completely classical in this space. And it's secure against a body adversary that makes the number of rates. So this protocol is in the quantum random Markov model. And the quantum random Markov model is written in this paper and the quantum generalization of classical random Oracle model. In this model, we assume that the, the Oracle, which is an Oracle for random mapping from 0, 1 to the star to 0, 1 to the very long string. And other parties can curate this Oracle. This works as an ideal model for head functions or symmetric encryption. And there's a famous methodology called random Oracle methodology, which says, once we design protocol in this model, in practice, we can instantiate it with head functions or symmetric encryptions and judge its security heuristically. This setting is formal, but the instantiation could be subtle. The do exist some unintentionable constructions, which is given in these two paper. The first one is a classical, part, classical paper, and the second one is a quantum analog. So, well, on the other uh, hand, so so to you a question, so it might be a naive question. So, uh, um, what is the extra uh, bit of information in the in, in the, the second work, the uh, the, the two thousand twenty work? Isn't the uh, uh, the classical you know counterexample also uh, 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 you know uh, relate to the quantum step, uh, the special case, or? Were there specific examples for quantum? Uh, I don't know the details of the second paper very well. Sorry. I see. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, it's written by Edward Eaton and Fonso. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Okay. On the other hand, Quantum random oracle model and classic random oracle model have been studied for a very long time and helped the construction of many crypto primitives. So let's go to our protocol descriptions. Let's first give a top down overview and a framework for.
in this in this protocol, we use a getting in the following form: the client will hold the description of two keys, two different keys, which are two different load streams in zero one to the kappa. And the server will hold the superposition of these two keys. The superposition is a unique phenomenon in quantum world. And this gadget comes from this paper, etc. And our observation is the server, which only holds the superposition of these two, two strings, could not output both keys simultaneously. Compare it and get one of the two strings randomly, but there's no way to get both. And this observation is also important in our constructions. And the top-down overview is as follows. First, the client will prepare and send some initial gadgets. It's only polycap path. And each gadget is of the following form, and the keys are different. So this part contains quantum computation for the client. Uh, so, but the, to, to you again, sorry, Sophie, so to you, one slide back, this, uh, this, so which work is it, the, uh, this gadget of the two keys? Uh, uh, the slide, the, the previous slide? Uh, oops, whoops. We seem to have lost Jayu. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Maybe? Sorry, the network is unstable. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, do you, maybe you, you want to uh, stop your, your camera maybe because you, your voice keep getting, uh, 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 you know, choppy. So maybe without the camera, it would be easier. Yeah, I will try that. Okay. Uh, should I start from the last page? Yeah, so can you go? Uh, one, maybe start from the start back? of this page. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, never mind. So, which one is BCMVV? Uh, Zvika, Brakaski, Paul Cristiano, uh, Umila Mahatil, Thomas Vidik, and Umesh Vasrani. I see. I see. It really, so, so, it looks a little bit like in like a one message OT kind of, right? So, uh, so the adversary gets a, a one message that he can open either as x0 or an x1, but not as both, right? Or something, it's not right. really, yeah? Is it like something like that? Uh, pardon me, could you, could you repeat it, that? It sounds like a one message OT, you know? So I can yeah. send you a message and you can open it either as x0 or an x1, but not both. Uh, uh, but actually these are different, yeah. They have some similarities, but these are different things. So here the server can try to mirror it, and it will get either x0 or x1 randomly. I see. It's kind of a random OT, OK. Right. OK. Interesting, OK. So top-down overview of our construction is as follows. So first, the client will, uh, will send some initial gadgets, which is only particle part. And each gadget is of, the, is of the following form. The keys are different. And this part is the only quantum computation for the client. And then both parties use some classic interactions to expand the number of gadgets to, to a linear site. And the security of these gadgets uh, are still secure enough for later computation. And then both parties use this gadget to eva evaluate the circuit security. security. And the first step, the gadget expansion step, is called the remote gadget preparation. And this is further achieved in the following steps. First, both parties, so first we will design a weekly secure and gadget increasing protocol. And we will introduce the weak security later. 
and then both parties will amplify the security to a fully secure protocols. So the more gadget preparation part is the most difficult part for this work. And the gadget safety validation part is also not trivial. We can give an informal illustration here. First, the client will host some initial gadgets, the description of initial kits, and the server will host some initial gadgets. And they write some protocols. And during the protocol, the I think we might have lost Joey's voice again. Uh, we can't hear you at all, or at least I can't hear you at all. Yeah, me neither. Uh, hmm. But at least it's still the slides are there, so please don't. Yeah, the slides are still here. Uh, oops, oops, not anymore. Okay. Probably he's trying disconnecting and reconnecting from to the yeah. Zoom room. Give him a minute, I guess. Hey, everyone. This is Adam. I'm sorry to join late. Is there a technical issue going on, or what's? what's yeah, Jay just cut out uh, a little bit, so I think he's trying to reconnect to Zoom now. It happened about 30 seconds ago. OK. Yeah, we should really look into getting our own group like satellite network for talks from China. Yeah. Ron, do you think that's in the risks budget? <laughs> OK. We just, you know, I think we should just build a satellite and send it, right? We can do it. That's definitely building to our, uh, our expertise. Right. Okay. Let me okay. send him an email, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Adam, you should pick up them, you know, it's, it's pretty stuff, right? Okay, well, I just sent him an email. So for Adam's benefit, uh, this also happened about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, but he came back right away. So yeah. now that it's been, you know, two whole minutes, it's I'm long, worried. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think maybe, maybe you know, in the future when the talks are from, you know, the speakers far away, Maybe it makes sense to try to record the talk ahead of time. Uh, at least uh, some backup and maybe then, you know, and, and then the speaker can still be around and, you know, we can stop and ask for questions and then, you know, the speaker can online answer questions. But... Yeah, that's a really good idea, Ron. Uh, especially for talks from, yeah, from, from overseas where like there's a uh, reasonable the chance issues. of serious connection problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like even what we could, you could even ask the speaker to break the talk into 15 minute segments or something with time for, you know, Q&A and discussion. <laughs> between. Yeah. As the person who tries to convince speakers to speak, I recommend we don't do this because this will be a lot more work for them and we won't get as many speakers. <laughs> but, you know, they don't need to travel, right? <laughs> Instead of traveling. That's right. Whatever time they would have spent on the, you That's know, fair. airplane or car yeah. or tea. Yeah. Right. 
By the way, uh, since we're killing time, oh. this one's for you, for you, uh, Sarah. Oh, is he back? Yeah. I think we just got him, yeah. Yeah, hi. Okay. That's done. That's why it's not stable. Yay. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, maybe I can restart. Yeah, so so I think we we lost. Uh, I I heard your explanation of the first row, uh, but then I missed everything starting at your explanation of the second row. Okay, so we can give an informal illustration here. In the beginning, the server will hold some initial gadgets, and the client will hold the classical descriptions for the kids, and then they will execute some protocols. And during the protocol execution, the number of gadgets get increased, but the security of some kids uh, get become weak. And then they will use some other techniques to continue the protocol execution. And finally, the kids and the gadgets become secure again. And the number of ga gadgets get increased. And we know that the gadget generating part and the application part are actually interlaced with each other. It's not simply first to gadget generation then to application. So for the protocol design, we need to first design a model of framework for design compositions of sub protocols. For this part, we need to formalize the security of remote gadget preparation. We need to formalize the queries and formalize security. And for security, we define three levels of security. First, we need to define the asset security of a state. This is the most, most fundamental uh, security definition. And based on the security of the state, we define the normal security of our protocol. But for the design sub protocols, what we need is a weak security, which describes the security of some weakly secure protocols. And then based on this framework, we need to design many sub protocols, and we need to strike balance between among different parameters for these protocols, like the query security and the gadget consumption. The query is relatively simple. It describes the number of input gadget and the number of output gadget for a protocol in the only setting. And it's called gadget increasing if the gadget expansion ratio defined by output gadget over input gadgets is bigger than one. And the security is relatively complicated. The most basic security concept is the security which describes how the, which describes the server's ability to compute both keys from, from the state. Here we can assume the state of all the parties can be described by a purified joint state, psi. Uh, and this state will describe everything, and the randomness are all purified by the environment. So this purification is a, a common technique in Quantum what? And here we can imagine the client will hold many different keys. And the server in the only setting should hold many gadgets. And we want to focus on the security of some specific key pairs. For example, this key pair. And we want to use this concept to describe the server's ability to compute uh, both keys simultaneously from his part using a local unit array. And ideally, this unit, this unit array should output both keys. And if we want to say this state is secure, the server should not be able to output both keys using a small number of random local queue rates. Uh, so the first parameter, total eta, describes upper bound on the number of random Oracle curates allowed by the server. And the second parameter describes the source ability 
to output both keys from the, from the state using only less than two to iterate the Merkle queries. And the form definition is slightly more complicated than that. We want to allow the server to have access to some auxiliary information. And this auxiliary information is, in practice, is really taken to be the decryption of other keys. And this can allow us to get rid of some strange correlation between different key pairs. And it helps us analyze, analyze the security of some protocols. And we also allow the server to have access to some hashtag of the of these two keys, which gives the server some uh, key verification, which gives the server some key ver verification abilities. So we want to say if the server still could not output both keys uh, with access to this information, the protocol, the state is secure for these two key pairs, for these key pairs. So, so, so do you, so what is the auxiliary information? Uh, what is uh, the information is just the two keys? In this definition, can you say it again? I'm sorry. Uh, in this definition, we allow the auxiliary information to be anything. But in practice, uh, the information Z is usually taken to be the description of other kids. So there are many key pairs. And we want to focus on the security for one key pair. And we want to decorrelate this key pair and other key pairs. I see. So, so the auxiliary information, I guess, is fixed before the keys are chosen? Because otherwise, the auxiliary information can just be the two keys, right? Uh, here, the auxiliary information could be related to the, to the other key pairs. Not uh, to the key that you choose, right? Right. I see. Okay. That's strange. So it's good that you, Jen, you're not thinking about auxiliary information, which is, say, the first half of the bits of uh, the keys or something. No. no. It's fixed uh, ahead of time before the keys are chosen. Okay. Uh, no, but I can say, uh, uh, how can I say that? So, uh, actually, it's, so the city information is not arbitrary here. It's part of the definition, and it's possible that the state is secure for some city information, but not secure for other city information. I see. So it's given in part of it, as part okay. of this. It's secure to respect the specific information. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So based on this definition, we can define the security of the remote gadget preparation protocol. So we say a protocol has output security eta, if and only if the output state of the protocol has S security described by parameter two to eta and two to minus eta uh, for each key pair in K. And we take the auxiliary information to be all the other output key pairs, uh, which, basic, which basically means the output state is exponentially secure and different keys are not correlated. So some other auxiliary information is hidden in the definition. But for the design of sub-protocols, what we need is a weak security. And weak security allows us to control the behavior of the protocols in a more precise way. And the weak security describes how the security of the initial state uh, is transformed to the security of the output state. And for the initial, so, the, so for the initial state, the condition is the state is as secure for each key pair in the input. And we also need to additionally assume 
just that it's not to your behalf, uh, which is in most cases uh, weak requirement. And I want to skip that uh, in this talk. And for the output part, there are two cases. These are the passive probability is upper, is upper bound by a parameter P. Here we can imagine P is uh, something smaller than one by at least a inverse polynomial, which means, uh, which means there is some uh, significant failure probability and the server can get caught if it cheats. And the second case is uh, the pattern space of the output state is as is for each for each key pair in the output key pair. And here the output security can be different from the input security, but we can imagine uh, C prime is not very big, so it still has some kind of security. And this will be the framework that we use in our protocol design. So first we need to design a weakly scale gauge equation protocol. So let's give an overview. Uh, first we need to design a protocol that is weakly scale, but not gauge increasing. For this step, we use a robust replace couple table which is new construction, and padded Hama test, uh, which is also a new protocol, but is a padded variant of the Hama test for the previous paper. To design a protocol that transforms two gadgets, two gadgets, but it has some, but it, but it can, but it has weak security. Then we we'll use a parallel repetition style technique to get a protocol that transforms n plus one gadgets to two n gadgets which is a protocol that, that is getting increasing and weak is secure. So I don't think I have, I have sufficient time to go through the constructions, the detail of the construction, but I can give an overview. So the construction is based on garbage tables, actually a variant which is called the of garbage table, but we don't need to couple a very large circuit. Uh, here we need to, use a reverse gap table or some simple gates, which is a top gate, and use it to uh, equate the number of gadgets. So simply use a, so if we simply use a reverse, reverse of a gap table, it doesn't work because the number of output gadgets is equal to the number of input gadgets. We want a construction that can save one input gadgets and try, to, and try to get a protocol that transforms two input gadgets to three output gadgets. And one simple idea is to simply so, allow- so, sorry, so what do you mean by reversible garbage uh, uh, table, uh, uh, circuit? So is, is the underlying circuit reversible or, or just the, the garbage circuit? Well, I guess the garbage circuit has to be reversible because, uh, both, because both. physics, but, but the underlying circuit can be normal circuit, right? Uh, in this construction, both are reversible. So here we only, yeah, so the reversible garbage table can only be applied on reversible circuit, uh, which is, and the detailed description for reverse garbage table or reversible garbage circuits is given in my previous paper. And I think this paper we don't need to use very the coupling of very large circuit. What we need is to do reverse of coupling for top gate. And this gives us some Ron was that sorry, was that answer clear, Ron? Did you did you get all of what Joe you was saying just there? I'm not sure I did, but uh, but I think in the interest of time, let's continue. I'm, I'm, maybe I'll bug you guys later. But I think I get the point in general. So I'll, I can, I, I'm just going to jump in just for a second, then I'll let Jayu continue. So in his TCC 2019 paper, like last year, Jayu used, came up with this idea of these reversible, how to garble reversible tables. 
um, that happened in um, so the the but the the idea is like you need both the circuit that you're garbling for for it to work like with quantum uh, evaluation you need both the revert the circuit that you're garbling to be reversible yeah. and you right. need that the the algorithm that evaluates the garbled circuit that also has to be reversible. That computation has to be reversible. So you need like reversibility at two kind of different logical layers for it to work. Right. But the underlying circuit maybe if it's just a classical circuit, maybe it doesn't need to be reversible, but never mind. You can, there's a Actually it does. <laughs> no, so in order for you to be able to apply it to quantum information. Right. So like secret quantum information. So the the you know, there's this thing that this Logically, the the server is carrying out some some quantum computation. Right. In in order for that to happen, it has to be that the circuit you are garbling uh, itself be reversible. Otherwise, otherwise the underlying thing won't be able to be reversible. <laughs> okay. So like it's not obvious, but anyway, the point is it's. Yeah, this is not idea. new to this paper, I but see. it's like an untrivial idea, and I think it's quite cool, actually. Yeah. I, I'm, okay. I, I need to understand why the underlying thing has to be reversible, but, uh, uh, but okay, never mind. That's a different discussion. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's not do it. Yeah. It's, I think it will take too long, probably. Okay. So, but simply, you just. Uh, the wake up table doesn't work. Uh, so we want so what we want to say one gadget from on the client side. And my simple idea is to simply allow other other client to provide the description of these two keys and send to the server and allow the server to prepare the gadgets. And we might imagine the reverse wrap table can provide some kind of security. But it turns out that's not true. And one way to analyze this protocol intuitively, it will analyze the behavior against cancel attacker, which means the attacker can simply measure the keys, the gadgets of the input part and get two combinations of the input, input keys. And then they can make use, of, make use of, of the forward table and the backward table in the reverse gap table or top gate and decrypt many zeros in this table. So ideally, because there are only two input combinations, uh, we can hope the adversary can only decrypt two rows in the forward table, two rows in the backward table. But that's not true. It's a simple construction. So one idea here is to add an additional bitwise permutation in the reverse gap table for top gate. So this is not, not, so we don't need to use reverse gap table for very large circuit. So here is only a topic gate reversible with topic gate coupling. And topic gate has three output bars. And we pick two output bars and use a bitwise permutation to permute the bits randomly. So we record that previous so previously we treat all the keys as a single ten. But we call that there are also bit strings. And when these two and when the different bits in these two strings are permuted, with the adversary, without knowing the permutation, it will not know uh, which bit corresponds to which gadget. And this provides some additional, and this provides some additional protections for the output gadgets. And the result is, even if uh, two keys on this part on this bar is revealed simultaneously. The adversary could not slice out the corresponding bits on the output part. And, and the result is the adversary could only intuitively the adversary could only know two gadget, two uh, two rows in the forward table, two rows in the backward table. But this leads to another problem because the adversary could not, because the only sub could not uh, could not depermute the output part. But if the client provides the permutation after, the, after this step, the malicious server 
will be able to break the copper table again. So this is what, what I said just now. The next step is to make use of a protocol called Petit Hyman test, which is a petty variant of the Hyman test in a previous paper to force the adversary to give up the decretion ability. And this protocol, this sub protocol, will force the server to uh, forget some knowledge of the output key pairs. And in the couple table, if you forget one key pair, you lose the ability to decrypt the whole table. The pattern Hyman test is constructed as follows. And the actual pattern is important here. Without the actual pattern, uh, it does not have the ability, does not have the properties that we want. And the property of this protocol sets, if the server want to pass this uh, protocol with high probability, it has to give up the ability to compute the keys in K or the post-test state. And using this sub-protocol, we get the following protocol. Uh, in the beginning, the server has two gadgets, and the client will prepare the robust rose cover table to allow the server to uh, transform these two gadgets to three gadgets, but two of them are, are protected under the bitwise permutation. And then both parties run petty hammer test on the first gadgets. And if the server can pass this test, the server will, the client will review the permutation and allow the only server to depermute the output state and get the two states. So let's recall the previous slide. And we get a protocol that transforms two gadgets to two gadgets. And it's weakly secure, and we can prove that. But it's still not, not getting increasing uh, because in the, in the copying step, uh, it allows the server to prepare one more gadget. But in the Petty Hammer test step, one gadget is consumed. But we can use some parallel repetition style technique to save one gadget for each protocol. We can imagine uh, many protocols uh, like this is run uh, in parallel. And the first gadget, which is a gadget used in the petty Hyman test, is shared for each couple table. And the uh, only server could, uh, could use this gadget to, uh, to could use this uh, protocol to expand the number of gadgets in each block. And the first gadget can be shared in each ex execution. And we can prove the protocol is still weakly secure. So get the protocol that is both weakly secure and gadget increasing, which can uh, approximately double the number of gadgets. So now we have a protocol that is weakly secure and gadget increasing. And the next step is to use some amplification technique to Ampli to make it fully secure. And, the, and this step is called the repeat and combine technique. So we can go back to our uh, definition of weak security and see what we, do, what we can do here. We know that there are two kinds of, kind of weakness for the output part. First, uh, we, can, we can see in the first case, we only have some uh, probability we only have some results on the passing probabilities and does not have any uh, results on the security. And if the, and if the client is unlucky and could not catch the cheating of the server, the client, uh, the client will lose all the control of the security of the output. So first we want to get rid of, get rid of this part by using the repeat, repeat technique. We can imagine the client will run many, many blocks of this some protocol and ask it and request it, request the server to pass on other protocols. The only server should definitely pass in other blocks. 
And if the if the cell is malicious, it can only choose to use the make use of the first case in a limited number of blocks. And most of the other blocks, the server needs to be either honest or make use of the second case. And after a random permutation, we get a protocol that satisfies our security statement in the following form. We can write out a security condition where the first case is output part is, is omitted, which means we get a protocol uh, where the output part has to be has to satisfy some kind of as security, which means it has to have some kind of security, which might be, uh, which which might be only, uh, with, with only a low security gadget. So in the next step, the client will use some technique to combine many uh, gadgets with low security to a bigger to a bigger one that has better security. The basic routine that follows, and this routine allows the client to combine two gadgets to a single one. So it will consume some gadgets, but we can imagine the security of this gadget getting, getting improved. It will do a ISO computation. It, it will do an ISO measurement on the index of these two gadgets, which can be done using the hashtags of different keys. But this also leads to some other problems. The first problem is whether the combined technique is really secure. And it turns out the simplified protocol that I described in the last slide is not secure. But we can make it secure by using an additional layer called the QT refresher layer. After the generation of each gadget, we will use this layer to refresh the security and combine them to the old gadget. And this layer will not consume too many gadgets. And in this way, we can get a protocol that is that transforms the weakly secure protocol to a weakly secure gadget to a fully secure gadget. And the combined technique also has some other problems, which is on the gadget assumptions. And we can see Previously, the weakly secure protocols only asymptotically double the number of gadgets, but the combined techniques can still compile gadgets to prepare one gadget. But we also have a solution for that. First, we will self-compose the weakly secure protocols to increase the gadget expansion ratio from two to uh, theta kappa. Then on the combined technique part, we don't need to combine so many gadgets. We can reduce the gadget number uh, from kappa to square root kappa. So in total, the gadget, the gadget expansion ratio of the upper level protocol after the combined technique is q dot square root kappa, which is bigger than two. And finally, we can run this protocol again and again and get, a, and get sufficient number of gadgets that we need. And finally, we can use this gadget to do universal blind quantum computation we will use a basic routine called a basic factory to transform the superposition of, to transform the gadget in the form of the superposition of two long strings uh, to a single qubit state that has some kind of security. Uh, this step is not, uh, the concept comes from some previous paper, but this step is actually still not trivial. And we need some, uh, because the setting is slightly different, I will need to introduce some new technique for the transformation and security proofs. And the protocol, and the, and the simplified protocol is as follows. First, it will use some phase table to compute an extra phase on the gadget. Then it uses the Hartman measurement come from this paper to transform it to a single qubit gadget. And for the, actually for the security, we need the protocol to be 
more complicated than that, but I omit these details. And finally, we can run the protocol by Broadman based cartography to complete the construction. And this, and this protocol makes use a single cubic gadgets for each gate. And finally, I can give you some of the problems. Also, in summary, we got a protocol that is quite efficient, and there are two phases. In the first phase, the client sends some gadget to the server, which is extinct, and then both parties do classic interactions. And this, part, this protocol is killed in the quantum random oracle model because a body adversary that makes up a natural number of random oracle curates. Finally, I can give you some other problems. I think it's very interesting to have more understanding for this table. We still don't have enough evidences for the impossibility of identity secure protocols when the client is completely classical. And we don't have any understanding for these two cells adjacent to that. And it's also interesting to generalize this table to some other problems. And I think uh, it's a very big open problem uh, for the verification problem for the uh, top left corner for verification problem, which relates to the PQP versus QPIP problem. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, okay, so can you put the table again? So, so I, just to make sure I understand, so, so the, the only difference between the, the second column where you, this work is, is, is uh, old and, uh, uh, and the left column, which is just information theoretically secure, is the q -ROM, right? Is the random order. Right. Right, right. So, so that means that, uh, okay, so you say that the, uh, uh, to, to move one, one thing to the left would be to just get removal of the random order. That's what you say, it's a no, right? So there's no, right. there's no evidence of, of impossibility. You're saying it's only uh, impossible uh, when uh, the client-side computation is completely classical. Right. right, right. So it could be possible, you know, without just to get rid of the random work of the bench. Okay. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, do we know I if we add more rounds? Yeah. Is if we add rounds, that becomes easier without the random work, or you know, is there is there a way that we know to use rounds here? Uh, you mean? Rounds or uh, any interaction between the uh, the client and the server. Uh, uh, I think for the top left corner, if we assume that to be, if we assume the protocol to be the interactive, we can directly prove the impossibility. But but for the whole table, we assume the protocol is interactive. Okay. Okay, and another question. So this is a protocol for the right here. Is it interactive? No, come, I didn't hear the last sentence. Can you repeat? Can you say it? Oh, this table is for the protocol in the, in the interactive setting. Interactive, I see. Yeah. So, but I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so, so, so w w one more question about. Uh, uh, Moving to uh, an untrusted uh, a server, so the, here you said the right. server you trust the server to do what they're told, uh, yeah. but you know just in, in in classical world, if you already can do Yao, we can use Yao with just like even just Mac or information theory, you know, it's just Mac stuff to to make sure that the server uh, uh, behaves right. Uh, right. So you can just add a Mac. The computation can add a Mac to uh, uh, right. with the result. Would that work right. here too? Uh, uh, there is no general transformation from uh, from black quantum computation to quantum computation verification. But in most of the cases, uh, if we design protocol for the black quantum computation problem, we can usually use the same technique for the verification problem. And I think this is also the case for this protocol, but I haven't really 
work out all the details. I see. I, yeah, I have some ideas and I somehow I have some understanding on how to do that, but I haven't you know, but I don't haven't really worked on the details. It sounds in the random work model it could be even easier because you can use the random work as a Mac, but even without it, you can just do a Mac for information, theoretic map or something. Uh, this is not the difficulty where the difficulty is. And I don't think I don't think the problem is very it's as simple as that. Okay. Okay, never mind. Okay, so, so you you've been thinking about it. Okay. I have a question okay. that's probably me misunderstanding quantum. So yeah. in your parallel repetition part, you have this part where, you know, you have some qubits and you're using them in these several different right. reversible garbled tables. I right. thought in quantum, you couldn't reuse wires because of no cloning. Is that right? Or like, what, right. what am I missing here? But I don't need to clone the states perfectly. What we need is to thin out the state into different empty registers and Interesting. run the protocol in parallel. Interesting. So wait, you, there's somehow a distinction between, uh, I, I guess, is it, is it that you're, you're like copying it with lower accuracy or is there actually something about if you had empty registers now you can now you can fill it with the 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 I don't know the, the qubits that you had earlier or something. Uh, Sorry, I just don't get quantum. <laughs> in any case, so it's so it's not really. Uh, what I what I mean is the no clean, no cloning theorem which says you can't prepare two states that where each of the state is the same as the original state. But this is what I. Mm -hmm. want here. What I want to do is to use the synod operation, which is a quantum analog of the classical copy gate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. OK, but, I will need to figure out how this works. Thank you. Other questions? We are uh, well over time, but that's OK. Because we had some, we started late, we had technical problems. Steven is raising his hand. Steve? So I'll, un I'll unmute myself, right? which I always forget to do. Um, I'm just curious, when you're building your quantum circuits, like the, the Toffley circuit that, that handles the garbled gate, um, are, they, are they always, um, what's the depth of the circuits? I mean, or the time for them? Are they are they are they fixed depth circuits? Are they polynomial in the input size? What what's the the depth of the circuit that you're looking at? The depth of the circuit? Yeah. Are uh, you you mean the depth of the whole protocol? Well, the parts of the yes, yeah. How much time does it take to do this? Is, it, it's polyno is the quantum side, uh, the quantum computation on the client side always polynomial or? Oh, uh, it's at most a poly no as most a fixed polynomial the security parameter and the uh, case are relatively simple. Uh, so I, I think the depth is, could be log kappa. I, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's constant, constant depth, but I think log kappa depth sufficient. Makes sufficient. sense. It varies on the parameter, so it's going to be poly log or something like that. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. OK, we have time for maybe like one more question, if there is one more question, uh, and then we're at time. So, so again, so the advantage of the uh, the public key part, the uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, head of uh, uh, construction, is that is it's reusable? Is that the, the main issue? That you can use the same circuit to to run many input on on many inputs. Uh, yeah, it can do that, but our protocol can also support multiple circuits. And if you compare Mahadev's protocol with the BFK protocol, yeah, this is an advantage. 
I didn't get the answer. It's a yes, but you can combine. I mean, my, my hard disk protocol allows you to run the protocol on multiple circuits, but our work can also support multiple circuits. And the problem only appears in the BFK protocol, which is at this cure, which is an at this cure setting. Okay. 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 I'm going to end the recording.